Bob with Miracle Mile Garage. Today we're doing new seat belts on our 79 Camaro. <laughs> These are the classic industries black seat belts and these are the ones that closely mimic the original design of the General Motors seat belts. The only thing they don't have is uh, the GM insignia on them. And there were different styles of course through the years. So the ones that are in the car have the black buckles with the GM on them. And these are the frosted buckles with the, just the generic button on it. And that's all you can get at this point right now. Is the original belts have no or maker. Uh, they pretty much are falling apart and that's basically 40 plus years of wear and tear. You can see the chrome on the buckle is shot. It'd have to be replated and then the little plastic covers are worn and cracked. The one on the passenger side is missing. It just uh, would be more trouble than it's worth and probably cost more to refurbish these than it would be just to install the new ones that we're putting on today. So uh, hopefully it'll make the car a lot safer and also a little prettier. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the sill plate so we can pull the carpet back to get to the attachment bolt for the harness right here. Lift the cover and then we're just going to peel the carpet back and we have to get to that bolt right down in there. You can't really see it. Well maybe you can. And once we get that loose We'll attack the reel and get it out. This should be about a 20 minute job. We got a T50 Torx bit because that's what that fastener takes. And I'm pretty sure this seatbelt's never been out of the car and it is locked up solid. I couldn't get it off by hand. So we had to peel the carpet back so we can get in here with our air tool. And maybe we'll get lucky and we can just back this thing out. But she is locked in there. Here we go. There we go. One down. All right. There's a little part right here which you have to be real careful about when you pull it apart. These things are real bad about breaking, but I have to I have to separate this so I can get the seatbelt out. They're designed to the please don't break it's like 50 degrees out here today but the car's been sitting in the sun it's pretty soft so we can just take this and slide it through come on you i don't want to have to take the other side off it's probably going to try to force me oh, come on oh there we go all right and this is kind of jagged right there wow that was like that from the factory. That's really extra cheesy. That's designed to cut your new seat belts when you put them in. You probably have to do something about that. No big deal. We'll just set this out of the way. There we go. And then we're going to come in. And since that other bolt wasn't rusted, I'm just assuming, thinking because they were seat belts, they must have put these on really tight at the factory. So I'm just going to come in here with the, the air tool and just back these out. There we go one and then one more right there okay and that's that there's supposed to put insulation in these roofs oh it's nice and warm hmm. okay so let's uh let's get the new belts and that's all there is to it it's a real a really dusty crappy one and uh, this thing wasn't working good for a long time in fact it's not working now at all that was a common problem with this thing worn out I was tempted to use a knife to open this bag but knowing me I'll end up cutting one of the belts that's probably why they put that little spot there to tear it I am gonna have to figure out which side is right and which is left these are actually the rear ones um, that's weird I guess we've got some figuring out through there. Maybe these. 
we got to figure out. It'd be nice if they marked them right and left. This end towards front of the vehicle. Okay. Um, I just took one of them out of the bag. It looks like to me there's no um, driver or passenger side orientation other than how you put it in the car. They're marked as this end towards front of vehicle. There's a hole underneath this piece of paper. There we go. So this is going to bolt in just like the old one came out. And you can see these things are the exact same length, these mounting uh, brackets right here. And they're just going to go over like that in the vehicle. And I just have to make sure I get the orientation right so the belt doesn't fold over on me when you, you know, when you lap your buck, buckle up after the thing's installed. So I think we're all set. I think I know what to do. I think we figured out what this little guide is supposed to go. They didn't give you any instructions, but I'm looking at how this one was put together. So it looks like to me you would want it to be oriented the same way. So it's got a clip here and a clip here. And then we have this little bar right here. So we're just going to come in and clip that onto the bar like that. And then we got our guide and then it's just like the it's just like the factory one now. It fits a little different, but I think the idea is is when you put this piece of trim over it, that's going to hold it in place. So, let's go ahead and just get this bolted up. And keeping in mind the orientation front towards the vehicle just like this. We're going to mount it in just like that. Wait for it to click. There we go. It's lined up. Still not lined up. There we go. When it clicks, you know you're not cross-threading it. Okay, get the other one started. These are going in awful hard. And you know, main thing with these is shear strength. So I'm just snugging these up really good. I'm probably giving them 45 foot pounds of torque or so. Um, and that's fine. And there's that little guide. And then we're just gonna take this and slide it over. I'm very careful not to nick the new belt. And then pull this over like so. But before I snap that in, I'm just gonna make sure this goes the way I want it. And it looks like it will. And of course, these holes have to line up on the seatbelt reel. See, they have different tangs depending on different applications. So you're going to have to work that sheet metal screw into that folded over rectangle. So this is going to be one that goes there and there. And then it just tucks in underneath this piece of trim here, and then we're good to go. So I could snap this down, that little, this little white thing. Okay, I'm just going to support this with my palm and attempt to spread the load on this little thing here. Hopefully I don't break it. There we go. All right, that's back together. Okay, good enough. And this is just gonna go up in here like this. Just tuck in. I may have to take my trim tool and carefully work that in just a little bit. You gotta be careful with this 40 year old plastic, especially when it's been dyed, because I think this has got like two or three different donor cars here, with various colors red and brown and whatever. Now I gotta find this hole. Oh lovely. Okay, it went. That's surprising. Okay, that's in. Okay, that went in. That fits okay-ish. And that guy's like it should. Oh, that feels nice. That snaps back just like it should. It's a nice shot of the new buckle. Pretty sure this is plastic. You know, it kind of emulates the ones that there were some that were metal that looked like that. But uh, it's, uh, you know, the design's changed a little bit over the years. But that's basically a GM-ish looking buckle right there. It wouldn't surprise me if it actually fit in to this other buckle. It may or may not. No, they made it so that it just, just won't fit. And they do that on purpose because they don't want you using an old... Uh, seatbelt half with a new one. That's okay. All right, so the only thing I have to figure out is how to get the orientation on this. So when I pull the lap belt over, it goes like that. So it's going to go just like that. Do you ready? We're just going to put it back in manual. Maybe. Get a nice shot of those floor pans, too. Not too many 40 year old floor pans you see that don't really have any surface rust on them. I've always kept the seals on this car tight. Anytime there was a leak, I fixed it. 
And the other thing that helps is it sleeps inside when I'm not using it. All right, the only thing I have to make sure is uh, I stop jacking my jaws. Make sure I got this so when I pull this over like this, it, it pulls over right. And it looks like it does. We'll just come in and work this over. Okay, so we got the belts in and there is one slight problem. The original belts, I used to be able to just grab the belt and go like that and click it and I could take just a little tension off my shoulder and let the belt drop down because these things always had a tendency to ride a little high up on me. They kind of catch me right in the neck and these uh, Recaro seats do sit a little low on the driver's side. So the problem is, is I can't raise or lower the seat belt like you can in a modern car. So this is a fixed position back there. So it looks like the only solution I have so that this thing isn't constantly cutting into my neck. It does grab fast though, which the other seat belt didn't. That part works really good. Um, I'm gonna try to raise the seat maybe a half inch to an inch so that I can get this seat belt off of my neck. See, in the Maxima, it has an adjuster like this, so it keeps the shoulder harness off of my neck. You can adjust it right here and you can move it up or down. And with it up, you can see how it gets a little closer to my neck. Moving it down gets it out of the way. Don't have that feature on the Camaro, so we're going to have to find a way to make that work. Yeah, what we're going to do is the Recaro seats, they have three mounting hole positions. So you can recline the seat up, you can tilt it up in the back, sit it down, or you can just raise it up, um, up to the highest point. So moving this like that, I think raises that probably like maybe three quarters of an inch, which is probably all I need. I'm going to raise it on all four corners up to the bottom hole. And just grab on the bottom hole. On each side. I'm going to come over and do the same thing over here. Okay, with the seat raised uh, maybe three quarters to an inch, it definitely did bring it off of my neck. It's not on it as much as it was, so that's not too bad. So if I get positioned right, that's not too bad. That's pretty good. Okay. Evidently, they want me to reuse the plastic uh, cover that goes over this. So I'm assuming it's just going to slip over this. So I guess if I can take my belt and stick it down in the hole like that, and I'm just going to come in with a trim remover and see if I can just kind of work this over without breaking it. So I may actually have to just use a screwdriver. It's being a little stubborn. See if I can just come in and work that up. There we go. And that's going to come right off. See that? So again, they, they want you to reuse some of the plastic. You know, what do you expect for 500 bucks or whatever these cost? All right. So that's going to go over like this. I'll pull the belt out. We'll drive it home. Come on. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to bring this around. They got two mounting tabs right there. I'll grab it here first. At least I think I will. These two right here. Yep, okay, they fit. And then it's supposed to go. Doesn't fit very well. Let's see how it goes. Just like that. And this is supposed to drive home right over this. So the problem with the rear seat belts they sent us is they are physically a lot larger than the factory GM seat belt. So one of the problems we have is eventually I got the plastic cover off and it physically will not fit over the new one because it is too large. It physically will not fit. There's the factory one. As you can see, it will just slip right over like it's supposed to and clip in. Of course, you know, the belt goes through. 
but you cannot get this on. It will tear before you get it on. It's just physically too large. So it's not going to fit. It's significantly larger than the other seat belt. I'm trying to give you a perspective of how much larger it is. You can see right here, it's just a lot larger belt assembly. And the other problem it poses is it doesn't fit in the car. So trying to fit it into the car, this wheel is so large that you actually cannot get it to easily clear. It runs into the uh, that plastic panel cover right there. So there's no way you're going to get that to fit in there and also have that plastic shroud on. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with that, but this is just physically too large. I don't know if they sent me the wrong one or what the deal is, um, but that's a loser. So in conclusion, the Classic industry 74 to 81 Camaro front rear black 1000 seat belts. Uh, I'm going to give it overall a C plus. Um, I didn't like the fact that it didn't have the um, uh, tension release feature that the original belt had on the uh, front harnesses. And the rear seat belt um, was just a loser. And you have, to, you have to use that plastic cover as a guide, otherwise the, the uh, seat belt won't function properly. So you can't just install it without that, without that piece. And since it's too large, you can't do that. So basically I have rear seat belts that are not usable. Um, also, just as an FYI, the seat belts, you know, they all have to have tags on them who makes them. Um, this particular one was made by uh, Seatbelt Solutions in Jupiter, Florida. That's where, uh, that's where these were made. And uh, again, the, you know, the front ones are, are okay-ish. Um, the rear ones really are not. Just a quick shot of my 78 Camaro that still has the factory belts in it. These have the tension release feature where you can pull the belt out and then just give it one little pull and it'll take the tension off and then you just pull it to get it to completely retract. Life is good. Thanks for watching.